The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Access Television, the City of Oshkosh, the Oshkosh Cable Television Advisory Commission, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm Cheryl Hentz along with um, Paul Esslinger who is my uh, guest host this evening. Uh, Tony had a um, pre uh, previous professional commitment and he's, he's not able to be here. So um, thanks again, Paul. This is like the second time, yes. the third show that you're filling in. And I feel sorry for your viewers. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you should feel sorry for me. I got a little bit <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. But no, I, I, we do appreciate your, your filling in. Although this time it wasn't on quite a short no, I knew quite <laughs> <in> advance. <yeah. laughs> um, and um, our, our topic on this particular show is if, if anyone out there follows city politics, as I think most of you who watch this show do, you know that there's been a rather controversial issue in, in, during the last probably four months. And that concerns a fishing pier that the Otter Street Fishing Club wants to build and then donate to the city of Oshkosh. The proposed location for it is in a controversial area of Miller's Bay and that is what makes it controversial. It's not the pier itself, it's the location of the pier among some other things. Here to talk about that with us is attorney Charles Williams. Chuck, um, I guess, is okay. Yeah, Chuck is fine. And um, Mr. Williams lives in the area. Um, he's also a, a longtime resident, probably a native of Oshkosh, I'm assuming. And Lifetime. so, so this, is, um, this is of major concern to you, not just because it's sort of in your backyard, but just because it is... I care about the appearance of the city. Exactly. And also, we're very happy to be joined by uh, city councilman, uh, another city councilman, <laughs> Brian Bain, um, who was also on the Parks Advisory Board. And uh, that was the starting point of this uh, fishing pier proposal. Then it went to the Common Council. So we'll get into all the particulars, but thanks very much to, to both of you for being You're here welcome. tonight. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. As a matter of recap, um, this came before the Council. It came before your board in June, on June 13th, I guess. I believe so. Correct? Yeah. yeah. And the very next day, it was at the city council level. It passed your board by how much of a vote? I don't know the, sp the specific number, but I believe it was a unanimous vote okay. of the members present. All right. And were there any concerns that anybody had at that point? Um, not when we talked about it, it was brought forward um, by Mr. Stefani and Mr. Wooler spoke about it as a, um, at that time, I didn't necessarily know he was a member of the Otter Street Fishing Club, um, mm -hmm. but uh, he was, he kind of helped Tom present the, the peer idea. And um, they brought it forward and suggested that um, the Otter Street Fishing Club wanted to donate the pier and build it in Miller's Bay uh, in the location that's proposed. Um, when we talked about it, there were questions of what was it going to look like, you know, or, you know when are you looking at building this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the, a lot of the comments that we were, we happened to be at Rainbow Park that day. And so we actually were able to look at the Rainbow Park fishing pier. And we were told, that the Parks Board was told that uh, that would be a similar type of pier that was built at this location. Mm -hmm. And so after that discussion, it was also mentioned that uh, this was part of a, uh, of a plan, that there was some idea of putting a, uh, a pier in that location. Now, I know I've, I've since learned that there's nothing written in the comprehensive plan about that. And I think there have been some clarifying comments that it wasn't in writing, but there had been discussions about a pier in that location okay. and that apparently there was a, a, f uh, a removable type of pier structure in that similar area at one time in the past and so that's why that that site was chosen and it passed our board and went to the council. Brian, were there any, citi were there any citizens at the parks board um, speaking for or against this? No, I do not believe there were. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's, uh, that's a product of citizens not being noticed. Now, the, the, the city staff is going to say they were noticed, these notices go out in the paper, 
and we're all kidding ourselves if we actually believe people read that stuff. So, right. you know, at a previous council meeting, we, we discussed, I brought up the issue of notifying um, people in, around the parks for um, certain issues. Yeah. And um, just as a council member, I, I want to know your, your thoughts on, on how we should do that. I propose if you do something new, mm -hmm. that's, and I just pulled out a number out of my hat, $5,000, that whether it's a neighborhood park, and I still don't know what a neighborhood park is right. or what a community park or what a national regional park, park or what region or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what that all means. That's all a bunch of nonsense as far as I'm concerned. If I live next to South Park or whether I live next to Menominee Park, I live next to a beautiful park, and I want to know what's going on. Right. It, it, you know, if we want to, if we want to put in a new bathroom, you don't notice the people. I mean, you know, that's 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 a no-brainer. But as a council member, I mean, what do you think about that type of proposal? Well, I think I, I I think it's valid. I think we need to on the parks board. We need to address first of all what's a neighborhood park, what's a community park. If there's going to be a differentiation in terms of how do we notify people, and then I think ultimately we need to look at how do we notify people. We had that same conversation about the playground equipment that yeah. we talked about at a subsequent meeting. You know, originally the parks uh, staff were not going to send information out because of where the parks were, in neighborhood versus community, um, and the parks board felt very strongly that there needs to be something that goes out to the community. And so I think we need to identify um, a, a procedure or a standard of how the Parks Board will notify the community, whether it's at large or by residents, by area, on projects that are going on in the right. area. And I think the other thing that we need to look at, and I, I think that in that same council meeting or the council meeting before that, I talked about, um, I think, bringing forward a, a, a new council rule that um, we look at as a council so that if something passes a board or commission, there needs to be a minimum amount of time before it pass when mm -hmm. it passes that commission mm -hmm. to when it comes to us for a vote. Yeah. Um, not, now, maybe not necessarily it needs to happen if we're not going to vote at that particular meeting, but one day, I think we've learned our lesson here in hindsight, I hope we have, that 24 hours between a board or commission and council approval well, is not I, I guess, and I, I think that's, I don't think that's a bad idea, but yeah. shouldn't, the, shouldn't the city staff I mean, shouldn't that be incumbent upon them to realize that you don't bring something forward to a council meeting when you've had 24 hours of, of whether you've been notified of it or not? And you know, I just think I think we have that mechanism in place, and we did that when we talked about the uh, the contract for the the uh, Pollock Pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three council, uh, I think it was three, three. council members mm -hmm. said no. We need to lay this over. So I think we have that mechanism. But you're right. I mean, your assertion is right. We we can't be voting on this stuff um, without proper information and we right. in the executive session by yeah. the time this airs it's going to all be public but in the executive session when we were talking about the five rivers mm -hmm. um, you know the, the news, news media was going to get something on a Friday and we're going to vote on it on Tuesday we all had questions our head were spinning in the executive session how we're going to be able to vote on something on Tuesday when we don't understand ourselves is I, I think this council has just gotten into a bad habit of bringing things forward whether it be the council members or, or the city staff and voting on it without proper knowledge by ourselves or without notifying, without notifying the public. Yeah, I, I, I will say that I, I agree that we need to have some better due diligence there. Um, and I think that based on the executive session, again, this will, you know, when this airs, it'll be out there. <coughs> right. Um, but you know, we brought. So I think there were you, know, you, know, you, me, a couple other council members brought forward some information. And Burke Tower. That, uh, yeah, Burke, to Burke. Yeah. You know. We said, hey, we need more time right. to discuss this. We need it to be out there. We've talked about it a lot behind the doors, and we still don't fully understand it yet. And, and Burke, let the, let the residents have it. And, and I would say Burke well. raised a good question. He said, if we do lay, if we do wait for two weeks is this going to hinder anything right and you know once he heard it's not going to hinder it yeah. and what's the difference what's the difference, what's right. the difference? I agree. just out of curiosity were you noticed at all on this Chuck uh, no I, I was I received a phone call from someone mm -hmm. on Monday night uh, after the Parks Board meeting saying that she had heard that uh, they had acted on this and uh, so I I did appear at the City Council meeting on yes. Tuesday night mm -hmm. and I Ask that it be laid over because mm -hmm. of the short notice, and I, I, as I understand it, the whole proposal was made the week before. That, you know, it was mm -hmm. in the city's you know notice to the everyone in the city just the week before. You know, so right. it wasn't even a uh, uh, any real notice and discussion. The proposed location for this is is at the end of New York Avenue, and we have a photo here, Chuck. If you want to just hold that up. Um, our camera person can, can zoom in on this. It, it is one of the most pristine areas um, and, and views down at Menominee Park. Yes, it is. And it, it is uh, one of the most beautiful views in the city. Uh, this picture really is a, a panoramic shot, and it, it's hard to probably see it on the TV, but it, it does uh, 
show that there's no man-made structures around uh, anywhere around this part of the bay. It's, it's been an area that's a natural open green space area that is a, a passive recreation area that uh, we feel uh, the people who are opposed to it is that we should keep it that way it, and putting a large pier uh, in the middle of this area will, will definitely affect the, the view and the, and the beauty. The other problem is there's uh, uh, besides that there's just a lack of uh, actual services available at this location uh, such as parking, uh, restrooms, lighting, uh, and there are those services to the south uh, where right. there's more active recreation areas. And, and, uh, and we'll get into all of those little particulars. Sure. Um, you know, years ago, um, yes, there was a temporary type structure, you know, in this kind of location. Um, I think we've probably looked at that long enough. <laughs> um, there, there was a temporary structure there years ago, and it was taken out, um, if I can find the right note here, um, it, it was taken out, as memory serves me, Tom Stefani, our parks director, uh, yeah, he, it was eliminated because of safety and aesthetic appeal, uh, among other things, and then of course was the issue of installing and removing it on an annual basis because it was a temporary thing. Did, did you all see this memo that Tom Stefani had sent to Dick Woolink? at your parks board meeting, Brian? No, I don't believe so. Well, I find that rather interesting. Um, first of all, oh, and what, no, I say which one? this one right here. It's uh, dated June 9th, which was, you know, a few days before the parks board meeting. We may, we may have. Uh, let me, okay. I, I don't okay. want to say yesterday. In terms of, I don't necessarily remember the information about the temporary structure, if that's where mm -hmm. that came from, but I do yeah. remember seeing some information about a 100-foot T-shape. You know, that was in mm -hmm. the materials the Parks Board received, but right. exactly what we received, I'm, I can't really say for sure. Because it w would have been interesting if, if you guys had actually seen a copy of this letter. It, the first question that I would say is, well, what, what's changed from a safety standpoint or an aesthetic standpoint, and, and I guess I still don't have the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. do, do you know, I mean, how did this particular site come to be, just because there was a pier there once before? I mean, there, there, was a, there were a lot of things mm -hmm. downtown once before, and, and we're not putting those back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, do you have any idea how this particular location came into being? Um, again, how, how it was presented to us at the Parks Board meeting was that this was something that was discussed um, and the Otter Street Fishing Club felt this was a good location for this to, to go, that the fishing was right, uh, the location was right for a pier, there was a, a temporary structure there in, mm -hmm. in previous years, so go ahead and, and, and construct the permanent structure now in this location. Um, and that was most of the rationale that was given at the meeting. The other thing that Tom Stefani's letter says is there have been requests for a permanent fishing structure off of New York Ave as there are people that enjoy fishing at that location. I don't know. I've never, I, I drive by that area quite frequently and I've never seen people fishing there. The neighbors have said that they really haven't a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe some people are fishing there. Does anyone have any idea how many requests Tom Stefani received for this was, pier to be there? I think at some of the meetings he said two. Two, two people. And I, oh, I'm okay. not sure if the Otter Street, I think the Otter Street Fishing Club feels that it would be a uh, uh, good for their their uh, children's event to have a pier out there. That's they, their annual they fishery? They have an annual fishery and that's a two-hour event annually and uh, it uh, this year I, I was out there mm -hmm. myself and I was out there the year before and it's a great event and the fishery mm -hmm. or the Otter Street Fishing Club does wonderful things and uh, yes, but that, uh, that uh, there wasn't anybody maybe three or four people fishing at New York and there was about 200 on the north end of the bay. <laughs> so it, was, it wasn't like everybody was down there, uh, you know, and people have fished off the shore of Miller's Bay forever and uh, off the breakwater and, uh, and they fished off the, merry, you know, the various piers around town uh, and a lot of them go out in the lake. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but it's, it's for this, I think for this one event that they seem to be wanting, to, I don't know, that's why they want it, but if they mm -hmm. have, not even that many kids can even get on this pier, I don't think, you know, at one time, but. Well, there's yeah. just, I mean, th this is one, once again, one of these issues that seems to be dividing people in our community, mm -hmm. and 
this time it's not my fault. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> nice cop on show. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm not taking any of the heat for this, but, <laughs> but um, you know, it, it's not as you mentioned before. It's it's not in their. Um, what is this called, Chuck? The Comprehensive yeah. Outdoor this, Recreation this, Plan. This in 2002, the city adopted this Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, and it really has a lot of information in it. Uh, in reading it, you know, and the uh, the mission statement of the parks, the city of Oshkosh, you know, is to preserve and protect the city's open space, which this is an open space area, mm -hmm. uh, and natural resources, and provide a park and recreation program that is designated to enhance the city's quality of life. And uh, many people feel that a you know open space is is something to be preserved, and uh, and and that's what the objectives are and the goals of this park plan in, in many areas. And there's areas where they also you know propose having active recreation areas, and uh, they also uh, talk about if you have a activity that might be a source of nuisance or a problem for neighbors, uh, you should provide uh, sufficient landscaping, screening, and buffering to separate the neighboring residents from the uh, recreation activity. And uh, again, I, I think this could be in a better location is, is, the, is the only problem you know, I have with it. Uh, and I do think there are better locations that, that could be a compromise. And uh, unfortunately, again, it, it didn't it came through very quickly through the city council, and I think everybody thought it was, a, for some reason, a immediate thing that had to be decided on, uh, even though it had to still go to the DNR. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it it blew through the city council and the parks board in you know 25 hours, and uh, uh, as a result, uh, you know I don't think everybody got to express the different thoughts, and it kind of polarized uh, people, uh, unfortunately. And, well. uh, Attorney Williams, one of the I think one of the arguments is, um, and we touched on this earlier, is this is a not in my backyard scenario. And mm -hmm. um, we had a meeting. Um, you and I were at um, October second, I believe, it was Monday at the Otter Street Fishing Club um, next door to Jerry's right, Tavern. Right, we're taping this on the sixth of October. Right. right. Um, and I, I've I've heard. I've not talked to uh, Cheryl Lodge from the DNR, but it appears that there have been several letters that have written that have been written to her by people that are not on Menominee Drive or in, in that general neighborhood. Is that, is that a fact? Many. And there's been a lot, you know, people who are former residents of Oshkosh who come back here and visit, and uh, people who are you know, living on the south side of town, the west side of town. Uh, they also feel that this is a beautiful, beautiful park, and it, it is one of the most beautiful parks you know, anywhere. And, uh, and they, uh, so they're concerned about, do we need to put this large structure there, which will be the largest or the third largest pier in the city, and it'll also be the largest pier in the in uh, Miller's Bay, uh, and uh, and the Otter Street Fishing Club, uh, you know, feels that it's a good location, but um, they 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 accuse the people along the Menominee Drive and Hazel of being. Uh, think they own the park, but you know, I mean, the Otter Street Fishing Club yeah. doesn't own the park either. It's the it's the city's park. And I want to bring up, you know, in defense of the Otter Street Fishing Club, sure. um, you know, they, this was brought to the Parks Board, was voted on, was brought to the Council, it was voted on. Mm -hmm. um, they, I'm sure, took hours of plans and, and what they want to do. I think they got drawings from someone uh, on this. And so they've done nothing wrong here. I mean, they've, they've, you know, dotted the I's, crossed the T's. They went through the process that they were supposed to go through. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, and, and they said at the meeting, we've gotten bashed on this. And I, I kind of disagree. I don't think they've gotten bashed on no, it. I, I think everybody compliments that they're doing a worthy thing, and, and nobody is opposed to them doing worthy things like they do. You know, um, yeah. It's just the location is just the problem. And, you know, Brian was talking about bringing this back and, and possibly rescinding it. He decided not to do that. And I, I guess I'm kind of in that camp, too. If, if I thought something was illegally done here, I would have no problem bringing it back and rescinding it. But again, I, I think they've done everything that they needed to do. Um, it was rushed. I, I, I think the council was irresponsible for voting mm -hmm. on that. Um, but I, I guess just generally, a peer is a peer an ugly thing. I mean, to me, it's it's no it's neither well attractive or it's neither I mean, ugly. It's so, I, what is what's the problem with putting a peer here? Is is it really that terrible of a structure? Well, it isn't a you know a, a peers are not necessarily terrible structures, but they are regulated by the DNR because they they do have uh, you know. 
they obstruct uh, natural uh, uh, the natural uh, views. They they are uh, create obstacles against the view. I know there is this. These are two piers that the Otter Street Fishing Club built. One on the uh, it's a handicap pier next to the Wisconsin Street Bridge, and the the lower picture is uh, uh, the pier they built uh, on the. Uh, former railroad trestle at the Sioux Line Bridge. Mm -hmm. And that, again, you can see these are very large. Uh, they stand up above the water. The one positive thing that has come out of the DNR uh, uh, public hearing is that the DNR has, has suggested that they change the appearance of the pier to make it not have any pilings above the uh, deck of the pier, which is will reduce the obstruction. Um, uh, but the biggest problem is, I mean, the, the visual appearance factor is a, you know, kind of an intangible personal uh, view of a person, but uh, the lack of facilities issue and the traffic problem with parking there and kids being down there when, when the pier is, is used uh, is a no-brainer common sense decision that any park planner and any parks board and any city council should consider uh, is when you put a large you know, active, active uh, piece of equipment or a large pier in a certain spot that's going to draw a fair amount of people, you should have adequate uh, parking, you should have adequate uh, uh, lighting, you should have, you know, restrooms, garbage facilities, all these things that exist not here, you know, and are we going to spend another, you know, 100 grand, 300 grand of city dollars to put in these other infrastructure things that already exist, you know, a thousand feet down? Uh, just because somebody says I want this pier here, you know, I, I think that's the, that's the common sense part of it that gets you out of the intangible, you know, personal beauty issue, uh, is that it, it really is not an appropriate spot because uh, the lack of uh, services and the, it's one of the narrowest areas of the the land between Menominee and the road there is uh, very narrow. There is a much deeper in front of Webster Stanley. Uh, it's it's about three times as, as deep between the road and the uh, the water, um, and uh, it's 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 just and there's already the infrastructure built over there, you know, and so uh, what you know what do you do? Do you and then you've got a passive recreation area that you're going to put a more active type of activity in there and uh, uh, it's you know it's it's really from that standpoint it makes no sense to build it there and then some people say well there's not going to be any traffic there no one will be using the pier anyway it's going to be just vacant basically you know, how long have you been a resident over there uh, my whole life okay I was well, born and raised on I fished there I you know I'm, I'm on a broader a, scale I sure. mean you're you're a little bit older than me, probably not a heck of a lot, but yeah. on a broader scale, what do you, what do you think of um, Menominee Park? I'm sure you remember it in the 60s and 70s. Sure. Uh, the park in general as a whole, what, what do you think of the the exhibits that we've got there, the, you know, the, the wolf exhibit, the elk exhibit, the possible bear exhibit? I mean, is it becoming a zoo over there? Are we just jamming 10 well, pounds of stuff in a five <laughs> pound bag? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the zoo is a, you know, a wonderful, facility to have and uh, and it was oh there was a zoo in Menominee Park for as long as I can remember mm -hmm. and uh, but it's 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 trying to put too big of a zoo we're trying to put like the new zoo in uh, Green Bay in in two or three or four acres in the middle of Menominee Park which again is a we've got a, a tremendous asset in the water here as we all know and uh, and the open space in the park and and that Trying to fit that wolf exhibit in there, and now a bear exhibit and an elk exhibit, and it's it's it maybe should have been in a different park, and I uh, I'm not sure where, but it's uh, it's really uh, that big wall that was built. I, I think you know nobody expected it to turn into that, and I well, I think a lot of when are the bears coming? <laughs> oh, that's maybe next year. <laughs> I, I don't think that's out there yet. Yeah. So, but you know, but you one know, problem I know it's been talked about. It's been it. talked about. Yeah. Well, and, and I think sure. too we need to go back to to the other uh, peers here, and I'm glad you know Mr. Williams did bring up the point that 
uh, working with the DNR, the Otter Street Fishing Club, has come to some compromises with how high it will be set up off the water and what they're proposing with the railing around the bottom, the two by four uh, railing, and a turnaround for people who utilize a wheelchair uh, and need that space. So they are trying to make some accommodations there, and I think that's great. But the other thing, when you're looking at these, and also when you're looking at the Rainbow Park, there are no lights for those facilities. Um, there are no restrooms right next to them. Um, and so I think they're that, close. you know, well, they are close, and, and, and I think it's arguable to say that the restrooms in Menominee are, are close to, would be close to this pier. And I think that's the reason why some of these things, I call, I'm, I'm calling them more subjective. That it's, you know, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, and we may have to just agree to disagree on that. And I think that um, that's where we're losing some of the uh, focus in here is that it's a, um, it is a subjective thing, and, mm -hmm. and we may disagree, and, and you know, that happens. Sure. <laughs> that sure. happens in, in a lot of uh, areas. So um, I, I don't think it's necessarily um, a uh – there are people who are having frustrations with the location, and there are people who are having frustrations with the pier itself. You know, I was at that meeting at the uh, at Jerry's Bar, and and Paul, when you asked the Otter Street Fishing Club members directly, individually, do you have another location that you might, you know, think would work? And and several of them agreed to a location north of this pier. Mm -hmm. And I believe someone in the audience, you she know, said, said no. no that yeah, it's, yeah, you're missing was, the point. She was opposed yeah. to that well, also. Don't appear. Period. Right, and right. so I mean, you have to separate these Hello. things. I think there are a lot of arguments and a lot of discussions right. being rolled into one, and there are well, multiple issues. And, and my purpose for being at that meeting was to try to come up with some type of happy medium. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. early on in the meeting, I think uh, Mr. Waller from the Otter Street <laughs> Fishing Club basically said, look. This is where we want it. We're not going anywhere else. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, for the folks that don't want it there, it passed the Parks Board, it passed the Council, it's going somewhere. Unless the DNR denies it, that, and that's a possibility. I don't it's think going. it's likely, but it's a possibility. So I was hoping that, um, you know, there could be some kind of happy medium, but I guess at, at the end of the <laughs> meeting, I found out that they just don't want it there at all, and so... Well, well that, that one woman didn't. Yeah. Uh, right. We didn't hear... But I think, no, I think I there's think some other ones that also I do not. think, though, uh, the same, the moving it north in front of the pump house, I guess is what they were saying, uh, you know, right. uh, has the exact same issues that it does on the foot of New York. It's, you know, like moving it 50 feet off New York, you know, it'd be the same issues. You know, no parking, no, no lighting, no things like that, and, uh, and the visual appearance. And again, you know, uh, that doesn't seem to be a you know a happy medium. That just seems to be the same, <laughs> doing the same thing. You okay. know, I mean, and I, I, I mean, I think a lot of people have to compromise on this, and you know, and they, you know, whatever happens, whatever the DNR decides, and you know, if it gets appealed, uh, whatever the appellate thing decides, uh, you know, will be, you know, and they can build it. But it, it would be neat if they could. The Otter Street Fishing Club could reconsider alternatives, and and you know, really. Uh, if there could be, you know, input on some realistic alternatives, and I think the DNR actually has, although well, they didn't say it at that meeting, but I've heard that Cheryl Latch, they checked other areas that would be equally as good for fishing and uh, probably less uh, obstructive to the view and have more facilities, you know. And well, let's talk about the appeal process then. Sure. I mean, if we get to that point where right. the DNR says, no, I think this is okay, now, you're an attorney, and I would assume if, if you're representing me and I was found guilty of something and you wanted to appeal it, you'd have to prove to a higher court that the judge erred in his or her decision. Mm -hmm. Do you see any foreseeable possibility where the DNR would err in their decision where you could take it to an appeals process? And, well, and is sure. it like a law, is mm -hmm. it like a, a court proceeding? I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I got to confess I haven't appeal the DNR, you know, peer permit. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably never will again. <laughs> I hope not. And, uh, but I, I do, uh, you know, I, I read uh, some of the, the rules they have, and, and I, I guess there's a 30-day period where you can ask for a contested hearing where a hearing, administrative hearing before an administrative uh, law judge, I, I believe, from the DNR, uh, hears actual testimony and evidence and looks at the pictures and looks at this and that and and makes a decision and then you can appeal that to the courts and and try to argue that he erred in some respect and there's cases that have gone to the Wisconsin Supreme Court which I, I did write about I sent you copies of when I I filed with the DNR you know that uh, where they've you know the Wisconsin Supreme Court and uh, you know said that uh, uh, that uh, scenic beauty, the enjoyment of scenic beauty is a public right, 
in uh, waterways. Everybody has that. There, there's other cases where the Supreme Court said that specific structures may be determined to be detrimental to public interest on the ground that they impair natural beauty. This is a proper basis for denial of a permit. Uh, the natural beauty of our na northern lakes is one of the most precious heritages Wisconsin citizens enjoy. Uh, it, is properly, uh, it is entirely proper that the natural beauty should be protected against specific structures that may be found to mar that beauty. And again, this area arguably is a very beautiful spot. And you heard some of the people in the audience oh, yeah. the other night. You know, I mean, the one lady said it was like a religious experience mm -hmm. right. driving down New York and looking yeah. at that beautiful And it view. is. I don't and, think anyone and, would. And uh, the moon no, rising no, there, the right. sun rising there. I mean, it's, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. And it, it's one of the things that we as Oshkosh residents have as, a, as a, an asset in this town. So when somebody says, well, you, you know, I'm going to just put that up there, uh, you know, and as a gift, I, I think the city and the parks board and everybody, you know, has to say, wait a minute, let's make sure we're not screwing up a, you know, something by accepting this gift in that location. And, uh, you know, and it's, again, it's, it's, a, it's an intangible thing, but it, I do think, you know, it's, there's other locations and there's, you know, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate uh, if we can't get a, you know, just get an agreement. I, I was hoping like the Otter Street Fishing Club might think about, you know, something else. I did mention like the carp ponds, there's, there used to be good fishing out there and their piers were falling down out there. Uh, I saw a plan actually, uh, sounds kind of off the wall, but to put a bridge from the north end of uh, Menominee Park to Monkey Island and have a walking trail around Monkey Island and, you know, and, and making, making that into like a wildlife walking area, you know, if they... And what's but, Monkey Island? Monkey Island is the settling basin uh, in front of Miller's Bay. Okay, because not um, everyone may know yeah, that, and that, so. And that, that's another thing that just uh, it reminds me that that island does protect part of the bay from the ice, and there's been discussion too. We had a, a marine contractor say that this pier at the New York location, because Monkey Island is not in front of that location, protecting it from the lake ice, that the expansion of the ice in that width of the lake, a 10 mile expansion of open ice, can cause the pilings to be moved back and forth by ice expansion and contraction that will But didn't the, the DNR hurt. representative also say that that could happen in almost any Anywhere, water? I mean, I guess so, but I, I guess the, pier, the marine contractor said it, it would be much better <laughs> Uh, inside of Monkey Island, so you wouldn't have that uh, exposure to that uh, expansion and, and contraction. And, I, and again, I think that's what the, that's what the focus of the conversation should be about is just the differences. There are two things: the speed it went through, and then mm -hmm. the actual pier, the right. location. Had it gone right. through, and it went through a month-long process where we had hearings, and we had people speak, mm -hmm. and the council vote voted still to put the pier in Miller's Bay, there would yeah. still be the same conversation of it's, you know, mm -hmm. natural beauty, there, there are better locations. And so, you know, that, not to discard that, but that is one item of the conversation here. Um, and, I, and I believe that, um, that, you know, that no one will disagree that it went too quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll find right. anyone who, right. who would say that, it didn't, and I will mm -hmm. be the first to say, yeah. if, if not, that it went too quickly. Yeah. I, I got some questions. They were actually posted on the website. I printed them off, and um, some of them we've already answered, but if we can just kind of run through them again, and, and some haven't yet been addressed. Um, we'll give you a break, Chuck, because most of <laughs> <Sure>. these are <laughs> directed at, at Brian, and I guess since Good. Paul is on the council, you know, maybe he can chime in, too. Well, Paul wasn't at the meeting. No, I wasn't. Unfortunately, no. when they voted it all, and, and I wish he would have been. Um, <laughs> why is this all of a sudden so important since it's not included in the long-term Menominee Park plan? Again, I don't know that it, there's a there's an answer to say that it was that important to, and it, it wasn't included in the plan. Um, at the time, it was discussed at the Parks Board meeting that it was a part of a plan. I didn't have the comprehensive plan in front of me to, to dispute that or, or to even um, confirm that. We've since learned that it isn't, but that it was a part of a discussion. I don't know how long mm -hmm. those discussions have had, had taken place, who they actually took place with. But sometimes when you're, even at the council, when you have someone from city staff or you have individuals who are knowledgeable about a subject and they say to you, this has been discussed before in meetings and, and we've talked about this and this is why we chose this, you have to rely on that information that you're given. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, in regards to comprehensive plans, comprehensive plans are brought about and approved by a certain set of people at Correct. a certain time. 
And I'll bring up, uh, Brian, I don't think you were on the council at this time, but we, I think it was last year, we were talking about the comp comprehensive plan and 20th Street 20th going Street. through right. to South Main. Right. That had been on the comprehensive plan for years. Yep. And my argument was now that South Park Street had been redone and it's a natural flow, 44 all the way down to South Main, that no longer needs to be in the comprehensive plan. Now, there was some discussion on the council and it was taken out. So, but the fact of the matter is, a council two years from now could decide that 20th Street needs right. to go through and whether that's in a comprehensive plan or not, mm -hmm. if four members of the council want that 20th Street to go through, mm -hmm. it'll go through. Comprehensively, uh, uh, conversely, with it not being in a comprehensive plan does not necessarily mean that four council members decide that it should be in the plan. So right. comprehensive plans are, are, are a, a snapshot of uh, a group of people mm -hmm. at a certain period of time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Their goals I, I, and objectives. That you sure. try to make, but you, you have right. to be flexible sometimes. Right. right. And, and I think, and I, I mean, this was, I don't know what prompted this particular gentleman's question, but I guess my comment would be so many times we do hear people um, when they're, like the Leech Amphitheater, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody knows how I feel about the way that was pushed through. Not the amphitheater itself, but the way it was rushed through. And yet other people say, well, you know, it's been in a plan for years. So when it's to their benefit, they seem to hearken back to that plan, mm -hmm. but then they don't want to use the plan for other things. And maybe that's what prompted this gentleman's question. I don't know. Um, how does the proposed pier change from a 100-foot long... Um, I think they meant 100 foot long pier with 100 feet T mm -hmm. to 120 without any further discussion. Let's just lay out the before we answer his question here because he's got a number of them. Why don't we um, why don't we give the statistics of how long this thing is going to be? Apparently, it's 120 feet long, mm -hmm. and then what's the T? How long's the, the T? T is 100 feet wide. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, so 120 so by 100. 100. Yeah. Right. The okay. the 20 I think includes the width of the T, um, okay. 100, and, yeah. and uh, the, uh, the original proposal to the Parks Board was 100 by 100, mm -hmm. and uh, um, when it went to the DNR, it was enlarged, and I, I can't uh, they, they exactly say why, but it, mm -hmm. it, part of it is, is actually uh, on the shore, part of the 120 feet is, you know, over the rocks, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but it was originally 100 by 100, and the actual plan, if you measure it, that they got at the DNR is, is 120 plus. And, and how, f how high off the water is this going to be? Um, I believe, was it six? It was originally it was, like was, six feet, but. Uh, I don't know what the original was, but I thought it, it has been, been lowered. lowered. Okay. Com uh, com I think considerably. Yeah, yeah I think it was think six originally. feet above the, yeah. the with the pilings was, were gonna be, there right. were 41 pilings that would be 60, six feet above the normal uh, Water line, and they've now leveled those to be more flush. But even if they've lowered it, I, I still the question I don't I don't have an answer for is if this is going to be uh, ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have to have railings that are certain? That's what I don't know. I mean, they're proposing just to have this two by four around the right. f floor of the pier, and uh, so that people won't roll over the edge with the two by four there. But mm. it, I don't know. I, I whether it meets the ADA rules or laws, I don't know. That's a potential problem uh, that. But what about other types of impaired people? Someone who may be visually impaired, you know, they they may have. I mean, if you don't have anything up higher to mm -hmm, stop mm -hmm. them, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that could be a potential problem too. Um, we want to talk about insurance issues at some point too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, um, you know, should parking have been a consideration in the approval process? When, yeah, when parking was discussed, uh, I, I think it was brought up at the Parks Board meeting and in the Council meeting that, um, that the, the proposers felt that it was appropriate for people to park along the street there and then that would suffice the number of people who would be visiting the pier. How does the Council give their approval without seeing design proposals? You guys saw nothing before you voted on this? Is that true? Well, again, I wasn't at that meeting. Right. So I, I but, I mean, you would have gotten something in your packet. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, we got written information. Right. But there was no, we, did, we did not see an actual drawing okay. of the actual uh, right. pier. So how, how did this happen? I mean, how did, how did six of you give approval without seeing any kind of design? 
I believe it was based off the information that was in writing that it would extend out from New York. It would be a hundred mm -hmm. foot by a hundred foot tee. It would be six feet high. Um, and, and, and again, for me, the advantage I had, I guess, being at the Parks Board meeting is I was actually able to visually look at and explore mm -hmm. the Rainbow Park facility sure. to kind of have an idea in my mind what it would look like. And again, I mean, you know, when you don't have any, when you don't have input from other people, I mean, Brian, at the Parks Board meeting, someone wants to come forward and I don't know what a pier costs, 30000 40000 right. whatever it is, hey, we want to give you $40,000 to put out a pier for kids to fish off of. If I'm on the park, wow, that, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. Now, if, you know, Attorney Williams or one of the other neighbors comes up and says, hey, take into consider this, that, and the other thing, now the gears okay, start right. spinning. And, but, I mean, I don't fault Brian for saying, hey, this sounds like a pretty uh -huh. good idea. Right, and it, on the surface it does. Yeah. And it's just the location is the only thing that... Well, that's true, and, and I think the other thing that, you know, one of the other comments that I've heard from Tony in particular and, and some others too is, you know, how did the Parks Board approve something like this so quickly in such a short meeting when there were a lot of other items to discuss, including apparently looking at Rainbow Park or portions of it or yeah, something. Yeah, that was the part, usually in the summer, the Parks Board meetings, we actually hold yeah. a couple of them, I guess, at locations, and I had... Newly elected to the council, that was my first meeting at the Parks Board meeting. Lucky and, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was at Rainbow Park. And so what, I guess what we do is we conduct any business that's there, and then we tour the parks that are on the agenda for that day. So it was, you know, it was actually, it helped me some to kind of have a visual idea mm -hmm. of what the pier looked like at Rainbow Park so I could kind of have an idea of what was being discussed. So is that why, Brian, it probably went so fast and, and got a thumbs up as quickly as it did is because it didn't seem to be anything controversial and at that point you probably yeah. you guys probably didn't know that neighbors hadn't been noticed either correct I, I mean in terms of the discussion of the people in my I think my I can I'm mean, pretty correct when I say that the folks on the parks board have been on the parks board for quite some time the majority of them have been on for a while and everyone seemed to be oh yeah you know we uh, kind of in agreement with this and it mm -hmm. led me to believe that this was something that had been bantered around or tossed around or was a part of a plan like mm -hmm. you know like said or whatever so I you know it sounded like a great plan at that point an idea and like Paul said, you know, mm -hmm. when someone brings it forward, when you have no other information being given to you on an opposing view, I guess that's what you have in front of you, and that's how we made our decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked, we did talk about it. It was, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes that we discussed it, if so, you know, around 10 minutes or so. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we discuss things quickly, and other times, you know, a discussion you think right. is going to go quickly goes for an hour and a half. Right. I don't think that, that the discussion was limited due to the time. It was just that was the end of the discussion that took place. Mm -hmm. And, and I did, I saw the minutes from, from that meeting and, you know, Mr. Wohler, who's a spokesperson for the Otter Street Fishing Club, who's Treasurer, making the donation, yeah. is also on this Parks Advisory Board, and I noticed that he did not abstain from the vote. Now, <laughs> I understand that legally he doesn't have to because he's not gaining financially from this thing, but I think from an appearance standpoint, it, it looks bad. But it also looks bad that Bill Castle, our mayor, voted on it um, when it came to the council, and this is in his neighborhood, basically. And something was pointed out to me at, at, at the meeting the other night is there was a, a box, several boxes of, of um, pamphlets or brochures or something that had been printed for the Otter Street Fishing Club, and the printing was done presumably by Castle Pierce Printing, which Mr. Castle owns, because these things were all in Castle Pierce boxes. Now, that right away, this person says to me, hmm, isn't that interesting? And my wheels started turning in my head. You know, if he were to vote against this, what would the, be the likelihood of Mr. Castle's company getting another contract from the Otter Street Fishing Club? Hmm. Just food for thought, right. you know? These, these little things that look bad to the public, I think are things that council members need need to really look at and, and apparently board members too. Um, and, and if I can, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Right. Just like w the city attorney Warren Craft, when, when council members are trying to deliberate on whether or not they should abstain, you know, ultimately he puts that onus on us yes. unless it's a legal thing and he'll come in and say, but if it's a questionable thing, he says, you know, Paul, Brian, you need to decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what Bill's responsibility is. I don't know if he knew that that print job was there. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to speculate on that. But I do think that uh, in hindsight, um, you know, perhaps Mr. Wohler should not have voted 
in, in the meeting. Um, you know, there are things that come for the university. Mm -hmm. I work at the university. I have no direct financial gain from that, and, and Burke Tower's in the same position, but we both always abstain from that because of that, you know, you want to be above reproach. And, and, and I think that I credit Yeah, and I think in hindsight, that. that probably could have uh, alleviated any speculation mm -hmm. that would have yep. occurred. Mm -hmm. Because appearance is so often everything. Right. And, and it just does not look good. Um, another question, is it logical to accept every gift <laughs> to the city as is? As is, I think, being the operative words here, um, you know, without making any modifications. I mean, a lot of times things, of course, <laughs> they're not being given to the city, but a lot of times things come before the Board of Appeals. We will many times modify those things, and I'm sure that you guys on the plan commission, you're not on the plan commission anymore. Yeah, I was as a you? citizen, and now, and now I'm now not as not. a council member. But right. when, when you were, right. I mean, uh, you guys, I'm sure, modified things a lot of times, oh, yes, too, and yes. put conditions on things. Yes. And I think that's the point that this gentleman's trying to make, is is it logical to accept every gift to the city as is? Yeah, and I, and again, I don't, I wasn't privy to how it was presented to the Parks Board or Tom Stefani in the Parks Department and City Hall. Maybe there were modifications. We don't know that, and that wasn't addressed and that wasn't asked. Mm -hmm. Why not involve the neighboring citizens in the process? I think we pretty much talked about that and I, I feel very confident that the council yeah. will be bringing something forward at, at some point. Well I think you know I, I talked about Mr. Stefani bringing something to the Parks Board um, to discuss that and yeah. I, I hope he goes through with that. There is in the 2002 plan one of the things the objective is to solicit public input in the planning and development of the park system. Yeah. Uh, particularly location and design of neighborhood parks, which this park actually is not a neighborhood park. It's called a community park. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but Mr. <laughs> Stefani did say then it could also be considered a neighborhood park no and a regional park. <laughs> so it's got yeah, it's all three titles. I think, all, I, I think yeah, we have parks. We have people who are concerned whether they live on Menominee, South Park, as Paul pointed exactly. out. Mm -hmm. I think we need to move away from that and look at how you know other criteria to notify mm -hmm. residents yeah the same criteria for every park no matter what it is right. otherwise you guys right. are going to get locked up in this discussion <laughs> of what's a regional park what's yeah. a community park what's a neighborhood park and and that i can guarantee you would then be someone's loophole sure. for getting out of right. something just sure. make it yeah. straight across the board <clears throat> Um, again, we already discussed this, and, and I don't think that any of us at this table can answer it, because none of us belong to the Otter Street Fishing Club, but if this is such a good fishing spot, why don't we see people already fishing from the shore? I haven't. Um, I don't know. Have you? Uh, I've seen people fish from the shore around, you know, different spots. But it's not, not in this it's particular not a, it's place. It's not a hot spot. I mean, that's uh, not to say that they don't at some, some point. Some people do fish but there, I'm sure. apparently the Otter Street Fishing Club feels that this is a prime spot where this thing should be. So, is it necessary to add a structure to a part of the park that has been kept relatively the same for many years? And I guess that's one of those questions where you might, there might be differing opinions mm -hmm. where people might need to agree to disagree and say yes, I, you know, some, somebody may say yes, this is appropriate, and someone else says no, this is appropriate. And they both have very valid and, and eloquently written and prepared comments, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it is a difference of opinion, I right. think. Is a pier designed for children and the disabled without proper lighting, railings, it'll have wires only, I guess, and no close bathroom facilities a good idea? We kind of talked about that, but if you just want to recap. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, in terms of looking at it from the other piers that exist, uh, it's, it's comparable in, you know, not, I guess what kind of lighting is not provided um, and, and the restrooms being directly at this at the location of the pier. Okay. And I think from, from literature that I've read, I don't think that any group can make a determination of what kind of pier they want. I think legally um, it has to meet certain requirements. Right. Mm -hmm. it, again, that's from literature that I've read. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not an attorney and I, I don't work for the DNR, so I don't know for sure, but I don't think any group has the luxury of just saying, well, I want to put a pier out there because uh, this is the way I want it. It's got to meet certain standards. Okay. Right. I agree. This one's for you, Paul. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Given that on a previous show, Paul Esslinger admitted what happened with this issue was tragic, why doesn't the city council rescind their vote and reconsider other locations and options for pier design? You sort of touched on that, but yeah, just and, in case someone's re yeah, you know, I'll just reiterate. I, and I, in defense of the Otter Street Fishing Club, they went through the process that they needed to go through. Um, I was not at that meeting. If I had been at that meeting, I certainly would have voted to uh, to lay this over. Um, but they went through the process. They went out. In my understanding, they've purchased materials for this. 
So if we go back and rescind this, um, they have a good chance of having a lawsuit if, if the materials don't meet uh, the criteria of where we, where we would want to move it. Uh, and a lot of this is subjective. Um, See, and I, I think that they don't have a claim, and I'll tell you why, because no matter what the city council did, they still knew that they needed to get DNR approval, and they should not have purchased materials prematurely. I think that they would have a tough time, and I'm not an attorney, maybe you can speak to this, but if I were a lawyer, that would be my argument. I think that's a good argument. Yeah, but I mean, but again, they, they went through the two mechanisms. Tomorrow. They went through the two mechanisms. Maybe they did buy it sure. prematurely. I, I don't know. But they went through the parks board and they went through the city council. Now, when you go through those two, and I, I'm sure the DNR is going to say, well, and, and the city was the one that actually, and I learned this at the meeting, the city was the one that actually put in the permit, not the Outer Street Fishing mm -hmm. Club. So the DNR is going to say, well, city, you've already approved this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that the Outer Street Fishing Club has purchased these materials, um, you know, I, I think from our, our legal staff yeah. basically told Brian, you can rescind this if you, if, you know, you have four mm -hmm. members of the council want to do that. But I, I just, I just have a problem with it. I, I know if I were on the Otter Street Fishing Club and I was, I voted to expend dollars and I went through the process with the city <coughs> and we did everything we were supposed to do. And then they came back and said, well, no, we don't like that now. We're going to move it. I would have a problem with that. Even Although, though the process <laughs> was, no, I'm sorry. It's okay, go ahead. I, <laughs> wait, wait, the process, I mean, I, I, maybe you are getting e to the point I was going to get to. the process was, was very much rushed and somewhat short-sighted. Right, but again, if I'd have been at that meeting, I would have voted to lay this over. I would yeah. have loved to hear yeah. Mr. Uh, Williams' uh, opinions, the rest of the, and I would have gone to the Otter Street Fishing Club, as I did at the meeting, and say, come on, guys, can we, can we move this down a little bit? What's the big deal? Mm -hmm. and, and they've made their reservations why they don't want to do that. I, I, I can't second, I mean, I can second guess them. I don't see any problem with moving it down a hundred or a thousand feet or whatever it is. They don't want to do that. And it's, they've Although done. some of them said that they would. No, none of them said that they would want to do that. Originally, I, I don't know, I, when I talked to him initially, I thought Terry Wohler was going to entertain the idea that before the this thing went to the city, or after the city council meeting, I talked to him and they were going to consider other alternatives, but they uh, apparently didn't. And, uh, but, but all I can say on your point, Paul, that they did everything they were supposed to do. You know, I sometimes the city council has to take the lead too and say, you know, did we make a mistake? If we made a mistake, maybe we should rescind our, you know, or maybe we should do that. It's not, you know, I mean, I, I you know, and again, it depends on the severity of the mistake, and you know, but, um, you know, maybe. You know, in certain cases, it's you should resend things if you realize it was a mistake. You know, and uh, and that can be done. And and I, I think the fish, the Otter Street Fishing Club would would you know it might if the city council took the lead, the fishing club might follow <laughs> and do what they you know and say yeah maybe we should look at it differently. Yeah. And, and I'm it, hoping yeah. in the end, yeah. uh, you know, I think the folks on the Otter Street Fishing Club are a great group of guys and gals. They've they've given countless thousands mm -hmm. of dollars on yeah. this stuff. Yeah. I'm really just have. hoping in the end, they just sit down and say, look, do we really want to do this? I mean, we've created, I'm not saying it's their fault, but there's there's obviously some animosity here. Is it worth putting up something? Are we really going to get that many kids or, or people to, to fish on this pier at the end of New York? Can we move it down there or can we put it somewhere else? Can we, some other project? I'm just hoping that in the end that they do do that. But if they don't, uh, yeah, as I said, I, yeah, I mean, if they go through the whole, all the legal things and get the approval, they can put it they can there. Put you it know, wherever they want. That's fine, and I, I guess that's, you know, what may happen. Uh, but again, it, it would be nice, you know, if they could, you know, consider the feelings of a lot of people. And uh, I think it'd be very big of them uh, if they came yeah, back and said, and "Look, uh, we just, you know, we're going to do something else." And I, I wish they could have been here tonight. We were trying to get Terry on, but he yes. uh, couldn't make it tonight. And, yes, uh, so he's got a work commitment, yeah. and and he did not want to ask anyone else from the Otter Street Fishing Club to be here. So um, that that is unfortunate, but we're glad Brian's here anyway. Well, and um, I think you know a lot of us who went to the meeting on on Monday night, mm -hmm. especially from the council perspective, I think we all felt and hoped that there would be some sort of compromise. And that's why at the end I kind of got a little excited there. Yeah, thinking, I did too. Oh, we have a new location. And then it was, <laughs> no. You know, no, we really don't. And so I, I don't know that um, if, if location is not the only issue, if there's also the issue of a peer in general, 
um, I'm not sure that we'll find a compromise in, in location. Right. Very quickly, do either of you know um, who is liable if an accident occurs on this pier? Well, the city, I'm sure, would be liable for it. Okay. All right. Um, and but that's not a legal opinion. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we understand. Um, you know, we've talked about lights, we've talked about railings, we've talked about bathrooms. Uh, even one of the gentlemen from the Otter Street Fishing Club the other night at the meeting said, hey, you know, if the city wants this stuff later on, well, maybe, maybe that could be another gift that we donate to the city. Um, and, and I made the remark that I felt that that would be even more intrusive upon mm -hmm. the neighbors. Agreed. But, but we have seen how quickly things move through at times. Um, wh what if this pier goes in and some of these things are, are brought forward in the future? I mean, we're going to slow things down, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that I think as a as a council member, the the thing that I've learned the most here is to make sure that we have um, s more than <laughs> more than twenty five hours of of input or opportunity for input. And yes, I know it went out in the council packet on Friday, and and it was out on the parks board packet on Friday. But you know, the weekend is people are leave for the weekend. They mm -hmm. go away. Um, they have other things. They are busy lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, um, one of the biggest things that I need to consider in any type of project like this or remotely close to it is how much time was given for opportunity for input. Whether people choose to do that or not, I can't make them and force them, but we have to at least provide an opportunity or more opportunity than this amount of time for and feedback. And if people were noticed. You know, that's the yeah. other big thing. Um, I, we're almost out of time, and I, I wish that we had more time because we could probably go another hour on this. And I, I know some of you have also sent in other questions. I apologize we didn't have time to get to all of them, but hopefully we've given you enough information to, you know, sort of make your mind up on this mm -hmm. and, you know, contact the DNR, contact Mr. Williams if you'd like. His, his phone number is in the phone book. Um, call your council people, not just the two gentlemen um, on either side of me here, but, um, you know, they're, they're all listed on the city's website. Very quickly, we have about one minute. <laughs> Tell us where. <laughs> I know. I hate to do hey, that. Uh, Tell us where the Coles Bashford well, House is. Uh, there's a meeting uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, uh, whatever tomorrow is, the seventh of October. Seventh, yes. Um, and uh, with the representatives of the board of the E. B. Davis Foundation, and we're hoping going, hopefully, going to persuade them to give us more time. We did this week have a, a donor come who's a, a foundation that helps children's causes, and they were very impressed that the Labor of Love uh, Pregnancy Care Center would go in there, and they said, considering the Pregnancy Care Center is going to be in there, we would really like to help them by fitting out the interior of the building and donating a substantial sum for the interior restoration and then uh, also for uh, uh, an endowment to maintain it. And uh, okay. so they're the, the tenant we have for it, they're, they're most excited about it, and, and that's so That's and we we're hope we've also got grant applications out there that we hope to receive money for the historic restoration of the exterior which will be great so i'm if we just need more time and more yeah. a few more dollars but okay. um thank you very good um and for anyone yeah. who's not aware of what we're talking about check out the ion oshkosh website there's there's an article on there about saving the coles bashford house and and what you can do to help why it's important uh, to, to try and save this historic home. Yeah. And I think if I can just real quick sure. take an opportunity to, to publicly thank uh, Attorney Williams for leading that cause and also the work that you put in on the fishing pier. I think yeah. uh, the yeah. people, yeah. The, the citizens of this <coughs> community need to know that you put in a lot of time and effort. I spoke with your one of your uh, secretaries or administrative assistants and they were saying how, how much work that you put into it. <laughs> and I've heard and from right. others. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I thank you for doing that. Uh, and meanwhile, the office doing. isn't going to hell, right? <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> hasn't yet. But, uh, All right. Thanks to both of you for thanks, being Cheryl. here. It, it's thanks, been a Paul. real enjoyable hour. And Paul, as always, thanks for, for pinch hitting. Yeah. And thanks to you for letting us in your home for the last hour. We will see you next time. Until then, take good care and keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.